Hi, this is Jeff at Slavens Racing. And this video is about how to adjust the Z dimension on KTM and Husaberg 250 and 300 cylinders. So, first of all, I guess we need to define when and why you would adjust the Z dimension. Um, if you service your power valve, so if you disassemble all the power valves and take all this linkage apart, put it back together, you should reset the Z dimension or at least check it. Or if you buy a new cylinder, like one of our uh, mule kits, um, where you have to assemble the whole thing, that's when you would also have to set the Z dimension. So the Z dimension is a measurement from the top of the cylinder to the bottom of the power valve flap. And it's important because it controls the power band of the engine. It controls the low end torque. And that's what, I mean, that's what power valves do in general. So this is a power valve flap. This piece right here goes up and down like this. It's a big flap. And it raises and lowers, uh, it effectively raises and lowers the height of the power uh, exhaust port. So on two-stroke engines, the height of the exhaust port determines what type of power it has, whether it's all top end or all bottom end. But the power valve lets it have both. So when the power valve is in its down position, the engine is going to be torquey as the RPMs go up, the power valve goes up, and then enables the engine to rev. So we can have the best of both worlds. Inside the cases is a centrifugal governor that expands from centrifugal force. Uh, these balls slide out and move the linkage that comes up to the power valve, uh, to this ball right here. So, the measurement is from the top of the cylinder to the bottom of the power valve flap. And this is not going to show up well in this video because we just don't have good enough lighting for it. But basically, you have to take a measurement from here down to the bottom of the flap with the flap in, the, in its lowest position. So make sure you push the power valve flap all the way down first. Then you have to use a pair of calipers. There's other tools. The factories have a fa fancier tool for doing this. You could even make your own measuring device to go from here to there. But I use calipers. And guys get a little confused about how to use calipers for this application. They seem to think that there's only one way to use calipers, and that's to measure right here with the jaws, and that's not true. That's just one measurement. You can also use these jaws to measure an inside measurement like this. Or you can use the tail of the calipers, which is this part. I call it the tail. And then the measurement is from here, from the body of the caliper down to the end of the tail. So you can just set your caliper at the uh, dimension that they give you from the factory, and then use the tail to measure. So, so we need to figure out what that dimension is, because for different years there's a different measurement. And in your owner's manual, in the engine specifications area, there's, there's a page in there that gives the dimension. We also have it on this sheet of paper here. This comes with our uh, cylinder kits. And it's this section right here. And it's got the different years and the different dimensions. So it varies from 47.5 millimeters to 48.5. So, let's see, I'm not even sure what year this one is. I think it's a 12, so I think it's 48.5. I'll check that information later. But I'm going to set it at 48.5. Uh, it's being pretty touchy here. It's close enough, 48.51. So now I'm going to use this tail. I'm going to measure from the top to the bottom of the flap. And you can't see doing it this way where the end of the tail ends up being. So I turn the cylinder upside down. I hook this part of the body of the calipers on the gasket surface up here. And I look through the exhaust port. And this will be difficult to see in this video, but basically you want to see the, the tail end of the tip dead even with the bottom of the power valve flap. 
In this case, it's off by a quarter of a millimeter, so it needs to be adjusted just a little. In order to adjust it, there's an adjustment plate over here on the side. It's this metal plate that's actually laying on top of this linkage piece. And it's got this tab here. And that tab bottoms out on this um, part of our bracket. So there's a, underneath this uh, Allen screw, it's slotted, and this plate moves back and forth. And that's how you, you make your adjustment. So I just loosen this, these two bolts, just a very slight bit, you know, like a quarter of a turn. Not even that, probably. Probably less than that. Just enough to where I can move this plate and almost where I have to kind of force it because I want it to be kind of hard to move. If it's real loose and flops around, every time you tighten these bolts back down, the, the adjustment will, will be, uh, change. So if you have to go, if you have to reduce this gap here on the stop, I'll take these very small channel locks. You can use needle nose or something like that. And I'll squeeze this area. Or if it has to go the other direction, I'll use a small flat blade screwdriver and pry in here on these teeth to open that gap. That will move this, to this gap in here and change the measurement. So don't get crazy and pry on this thing and break off a tooth. If it doesn't move easily, loosen this up. You know, don't get stupid here. Just gently pry on this to change this gap. It only has to move typically just a little bit to get it in spec. And then tighten these back down. Now they should have Loctite on them, and so you might want to re-Loctite them before you start doing your measurement. Um, I had a customer yesterday who was asking, he thought that you adjust the Z dimension with this rod that comes up here from the cases. There's, uh, there's an adjustment on it as well. It's got a lock nut and it's threaded, but that is not used for adjusting the Z dimension. That's just you know, the only time you need to mess with that adjustment is if the arm doesn't fit correctly on this ball. So there's a, the female part of the, of the fixture and then there's the male part of it. And when you push that on, it should have a slight, just a very slight downward pressure on this to hold the power valve in the down position. If it just falls on there or if it actually pushes it up slightly when you're pushing it on, well then you need to adjust it where it has a slight downward pressure. That's really about all there is to it. Uh, take your time on, for measurements like this. Slower is, always ends up being faster. That's all for now. Don't forget to visit slavensracing.com for more how-to videos and for parts and goodies for your KTM and Husaberg. Thank you very much.